um, you know, again, I I remember back in university, we uh, we were introduced to this book called Manufacturing Consent by Noam Chomsky. I don't know if you've read it, Ken. Have you? Have you ever read Chomsky? I haven't. Uh, you know, you you should probably read it if you are interested in in sociology and linguistics and uh, and philosophy by uh, you know from that matter. Um, in that the idea of creating an idea by the corporation and the manufacturing uh, side of things uh, is so pervasive, is so effective at the same time, and it, it can be so unbelievably corrosive. Because the moment that your brain tunes into the uh, the conviction that a name, a name brand stands for something greater than just the product that you're buying, that is very, very, very costly. You know, you know the the whole concept that you are going to pay 10 20 30 40 50 60,000 dollars for a vehicle more than another vehicle simply because it has a different name is is borderline insane but this happens every single minute of every single day throughout North America in which people convince themselves that the the buying a brand is going to make them more attractive to the world or they're going to show their neighbors how successful they've become. Now, look, I, I work for two car manufacturers right now, Nissan and Infiniti, and you may say, well, Greg, your manufacturer does the same. Yeah, of course, that's called advertising. Pardon me, that's called marketing. Advertising is something else, but you know, from a marketing standpoint, there is a race. There is an arms race by all the car manufacturers to give you the perception that their brand represents something better than the other brand. And that's how the machine goes. Do you agree with this? Yeah, of course. And at the end of the day, it's just brilliant marketing and just years of indoctrination that certain brands are representative of an elevated lifestyle, whether that's BMW or whether it's Mercedes or to a lesser extent, Infinity. All these bands are, brands are trying to do the same thing and make it seem like you're living a more lavish lifestyle or that you're going to be more comfortable or you're going to be perceived differently if you're driving one of these vehicles rather than, you know, a Hyundai or a Nissan or a brand that's considered more of a, like an economy car, for lack of a better way to put it. Mm -hmm. And the general public is always going to, there's always going to be those consumers there, though, that are more concerned about the perception of a product rather than whether the product is going to be better for them or if they even need to go to that upscale sort of luxury car level, because we talk about it all the time. People buy luxury cars at points in time when it's not beneficial to be buying a luxury car. It's a luxury car. You know, if you have a mortgage on your house, we talk about it all the time. Yep. You shouldn't be driving a BMW or you shouldn't be going for that expensive car because it's just a waste of your disposable income and it could be used to work for you in such better ways than just a vehicle that gets you from point A to point B when you could be driving, you know, any of those other brands that I listed before for much cheaper. Well, and, and this is something that I get a lot of heat all the time on, Ken, because the, the, the whole idea or the definition of luxury has been lost in translation. You see, at one point, luxury was exclusive, an exclusive, you know, in the very figurative sense of that word. It excluded most people. <laughs> it was exclusive to only the people that could actually afford to have luxury and um, you know in order for you to have luxury there are some very basic uh, guidelines that you need to adhere to because if you don't then you have your priorities m mixed up and, and one of the things that I've always said you should never be driving a luxury car if you have a mortgage you see a car, your house is for many people and we've discussed this with Mike for many people in Canada a house is the only actual asset that they have so if if a house is the only asset that you have, wouldn't you want to have that paid off as soon as possible? When when a car is the complete opposite of a house, a house is quite possibly the only hard asset that you can purchase and grow over time. And, you know, Canada, we're very lucky from that perspective and Oakville for that matter. Uh, you know, for the last 70 years, the housing market in Oakville has never gone down. <laughs> However, you're buying a car which one hundred percent of the time will go down in price so why would you want to make that leap when you shouldn't at least not yet 
It's the same thing that buying a Rolex on credit. <laughs> you know how many people that I know <laughs> have purchased a Rolex on a credit card? I don't, but I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming uh, you can yeah. count them on a few. More than and your you know, it's, it's, a, it's a specific age group. You know, the, the ones that want to pretend that they have the resources to attract the opposite side. You know, but you know, if you don't get your money right, you will never be in a position in which you can actually afford these things, like really afford them, because credit, credit has given people an illusion has given an illusion that they can afford things that they shouldn't because you are borrowing against your future self. You see, whenever you buy something on credit today, you, you're not saying that you have the money today. You're saying that, you know, myself, five, six years from now is good for this money. But what a lot of people don't realize is that you are getting in debt for your future self. So, you know, seven, eight years from now, you know, when I'm 55, you, I'm put in debt that 55-year-old Greg is going to have to pay. Do I want to do that? Uh, I'm not so sure that I want to do that. No, and, and, and young it's people not do ideal. This, young people do this all the time, Ken, and it's maddening. And, you know, whether it's a purse or a pair of shoes or a jacket that have gone completely out of proportion when it comes to income, you know, people don't understand the amount of time that they need to give up in order for them to acquire this asset.